Back in the day, the 3DS had its own marketplace, the Nintendo eShop, where you could buy all sorts of games and neat little indie titles. But those days are gone, like tears in the rain. Fortunately, some multi-platform titles still exist, like The Keep, a grid-based dungeon crawler developed by Cinemax and released for the Nintendo 3DS in 2014 and for Windows and Mac OS in 2017. Don't let its indie nature fool you, this is a pretty fun and enjoyable experience, although a bit uninspired. Today we'll analyze why The Keep is a worthy addition to your library. Let's get into it. The Keep's story is as simple and generic as its title. An evil wizard named Watris, having gained immense power by using magic crystals, burns down the village of Talia and abducts all of its children to mine said crystals for him. Why children? Apparently they're more resistant to the influence of the crystals than adults, but then again, children aren't famous for their physical prowess. But what do I know, I don't own any sweatshops to be an expert on the matter. Anyways, the main character, a nameless hero, enters Watrice's tower, gets captured and must now find the evil wizard and, of course, slay him. It's as simple as it can get. Throughout the game you'll get some lore behind the discovery and the properties of the magic crystals, as well as Watrice's backstory, but to be honest, it's nothing too interesting. Plus, the game keeps hyping up those damned crystals like there's some sort of super powerful MacGuffin that needs to be taken seriously, but in game, they're pretty disappointing, as they simply heal you or boost your spell damage slightly. In any case, it's a simple and serviceable story that does its part well to introduce the player to the game's world and mechanics. I'll admit, my expectations were low about the game's presentation. The Unity setting screen didn't help either. However, when I started the game, I was pleasantly surprised by both its graphics and sound. To be fair, the entire game takes place inside a tower, and you'll mostly be exploring caves and dungeons, so there isn't any variety regarding the environments you come across. But what is there looks pretty good for an indie title, with high quality textures and beautiful 3D models acting as decorations for the places you visit, making them a bit more realistic and lived in. I wasn't too impressed by the character portraits and some of the cutscene images, they felt a bit unpolished and amateurish, but they serve a purpose well enough. Same deal with the interface and the effects, they are a bit too simplistic and basic, but they didn't clash with the rest of the environment or break my immersion, so they get a pass. On the other hand, the music was great, and I'm glad there is an official soundtrack available for download. It's dark and atmospheric, as you would expect from a dungeon crawler, but it manages to evoke a variety of different moods, depending on the track. Adventure, excitement, dread, and calmness. It greatly enhanced my experience with its immersive ambience and beautiful compositions. As for the sound effects, let's say they didn't really blow me away. They're simplistic, repetitive, and lack any variation. I found in the music that they actually used Doomguy's iconic grunt when the player gets hit and the Daggerfall rat sound effect. <laughs> It was so blatant that it made me wonder why they couldn't use something more modern and high fidelity. But these are minor gripes and nothing that really hampered my enjoyment of the game. The Keep's presentation is beautiful, dark and atmospheric, immersing you in its world and setting the mood for adventure and lots of dungeon crawling. I don't really like comparing a game to another one, it feels like a cop-out. But I can't really describe the Keep's gameplay without mentioning Legend of Grimrock, as it is basically a more stripped down version of it. Nothing wrong with that, of course, it just ends up being a bit uninspired in places. The Keep is a grid based dungeon crawler, you control your character from a first person perspective and move around the environment in a tile based manner. And just like every other RPG, you defeat enemies, collect equipment, level up and become stronger. 
There are no specific classes or races to choose from. You play as a standard character with 3 stats you can increase on each level up. Strength, which governs your melee prowess, Intelligence, which governs your magical aptitude, and Dexterity, which strangely governs your health. Leveling up felt a bit pointless and tacked on as it is not very frequent and you don't get that many points to really specialize on a specific playstyle. Most of the time you'll be using a combination of melee attacks and spells to get through combat encounters, so keeping things balanced is important. You can also increase your stats by equipping various gear you find through the dungeon, either by exploring and finding secret stasis or by defeating enemies and grabbing their loot. Nothing too spectacular, but you still get some nice bonuses from specific combinations. Besides your regular stats, you also have two, let's say, specializations you can level up. Your melee skill, which increases by successfully hitting enemies with your weapons, and your spell casting, which increases by casting spells, naturally. Leveling up the specializations will increase your chance of hitting enemies with them, which is a blatant lie. I killed almost every enemy in the game, and on the later levels I could barely hit an enemy with my weapons reliably. On the other hand, I could always hit any enemy with my spells, regardless of my skill or the enemy. Maybe the specializations increase your damage output as well? I barely felt the difference. Since there is really no choice in who you can play as and how, role-playing is pretty much non-existent here. There is also no hunger mechanic like in Legend of Grimrock or other dungeon crawlers. How can you delve into a dungeon without your stomach grumbling from not eating moldy maggot infested bread for 2 minutes? It's a core mechanic in such games. Rudimentary and ultimately pointless, but still a necessary evil that I'm sad is not here. Combat in the keep is divided into melee combat and spellcasting. There is no ranged combat at all, which feels like a big missed opportunity, since you have the ability to throw items around to activate pressure plates and solve puzzles, so the physics are there for such a mechanic. Anyway, when you fight an enemy with your sword, you have a 3x3 grid, which you can use to draw horizontal lines or slashes to target an enemy's specific area. Did I mention this used to be a 3DS game? Regardless, it's a pretty fun and unique idea, as each enemy has their own weak area you have to target for a successful hit. Consecutive hits will unlock new combos, which you can use by drawing specific shapes on the grid, causing massive damage. There is one big caveat though, stamina. You need it to attack enemies, it depletes quickly and regenerates slowly. You can use potions to refill it as well, but they're not that frequent, so if you're a melee only build, you're gonna have a bad time. It doesn't really matter though, since combat is not turn based, then you can keep circle strafing enemies, avoiding their hits and damaging them while they try repositioning. Legend of Grimrock had the same problem, which was somewhat fixed in the sequel. Here, there are some occasions where you are surrounded by enemies or have to fight in tight corridors, but it's rare, and most of the time melee combat is easy, up until the last levels at least. The enemies there keep blocking any hit, and I inexplicably keep missing no matter where I target my attack. Luckily, you can compensate for your poor fighting skills with your magic abilities. Spellcasting is definitely the keep's best mechanic, as it is fun, engaging, and novel as well. Throughout the game you'll find various runes which you can place on a 4x5 grid. Drawing vertical or horizontal lines and combining different runes will allow you to cast a variety of spells. You can find scrolls which show you the correct runes for a combination, or you can experiment yourself. The whole system feels like a fun little puzzle, trying to place your runes in the right places so you can have as many different and useful combinations as possible. When done right, you can damage your enemies with fire, ice or lightning attacks, stun them for some easy hits, or heal and protect yourself from damage. There are so many possibilities, it's crazy! Some enemies can resist spell attacks and others are completely immune to some elements, but it doesn't really matter when you can stun them for a few seconds and just wail on them. The final boss was completely trivialized because of this. Overall, I'd say the magic system is definitely the highlight of the keep's combat mechanics, very fun to play with and experiment. 
every dungeon crawler worth its salt has puzzles, and the keep is no different. I won't say much, because the puzzles here are pretty much copied from Legend of Grimrock. Pressure plates you must activate by stepping on them or by throwing items on them in a timely manner. Mazes with teleporters. Lever puzzles. Going backward on a corridor to advance. Pressing the right buttons at the right times. Everything's here. They are pretty easy and intuitive at least, and I was never stuck trying to find the solution. Actually, I managed to solve most of them by simply brute forcing my way through. Yeah, the puzzles are pretty easy and uninspired, but at least they break up the pace of combat and exploration. The Keep is a fun game. It has good combat, a nice atmosphere, and a pretty consistent pacing. On the other hand, it's really short, its mechanics are rudimentary, and its overall design feels uninspired and derivative of Legend of Grimrock. Personally, I enjoyed my time with it, and I recommend getting it when it's on sale, you won't regret it. And that's the keep in a nutshell. Thank you very much for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want, and let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. Have a great day, and until next time, take care and have fun.